Now let's stay on the topic of police for just another minute and their response to all of this because police brutality of course was the original focus of the protest and for months now they've been accused of using excessive force on protesters. I talked to Ed McGuire, a criminal law professor at Arizona State University who's been following what's happening here in Portland since the start and he has some ideas about how it may end. So I think police should focus their enforcement efforts primarily on, on those protesters who are engaging in violent or destructive behavior. They should not ever be using force, uh, you know, less lethal munitions, tear gas, impact munitions, and so forth, or making arrests of people who are not engaging in violent and destructive behavior. And they need massive amounts of communication and de-escalation with the vast majority of the crowd that's not engaging in violent behavior. So essentially what we're talking about is differentiating their response into two pieces, facilitating peaceful First Amendment expression among those who are behaving lawfully, and making arrests for people who are behaving in a destructive or violent manner. How is that possible, though, when you're looking into a crowd of people who are all dressed similarly, it's dark, there are fires being lit? How can you, isn't that why police declare an unlawful assembly? Because they are essentially stating that we cannot look into the crowd and say, here is someone breaking the law, here is someone who is not. So people who are not breaking the law, you should leave because we're about to come out and arrest those who are. Yeah, I mean, I think if police are making a lawful declaration of an unlawful assembly or a riot, um, then at that point they are justified in using force. However, I still think they need to use restraint. One of the things I've seen on a lot of videos, for instance, is bum rushing uh, crowds that are retreating and uh, people who are sort of moving not quickly enough are getting, you know, uh, uh, baton charged and things like that. I think the police need to really, and it's difficult in, in such a chaotic situation, but I think the police need to exercise a lot of restraint. I think one of the things I've heard from police chiefs all across the country that, that, that is that, you know, police officers need to be really careful to avoid, you know, the YouTube moment, the viral video, that instance where a police officer is using force in a manner that seems to be illegitimate or inappropriate, because that's what comes to define the entire police response. We put a lot of emphasis on police and tactics and what they do to incite these things or to calm things down. Is it is it just on them? Will anything ever be resolved if we only focus on police or does there need to be something? Uh, does it need to be a, a two way street where the people within these protests start to adapt and change their behavior as well as the police in the way that they change and adapt as to how they police or enforce the rules within these protests and riots? Right. That's such a great question. And so I agree with you on this, that, you know, it's not only police. I mean, one of the essence, you know, the essence of community policing is that police develop partnerships with communities and both sides take action to make their communities better. So we can apply those community policing principles here. So if the police can engage in a, you know, a, a campaign to try to win back the hearts and minds of the moderate protesters, and they can start to build those relationships or rebuild them and establish trust with people who have a, a leadership position or, a, or, or a, 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 an influence, you know, have the ability to influence protesters, they could start to ask for things. Right now, they can't ask for anything because all that legitimacy is lost. They need to win that back um, with a massive communication and de-escalation campaign. And then as they win that back, they need to start uh, working with protest leaders or influential people in the social justice community to say, how can we reduce the violence? They need the help of the community. They can't do this alone.